wonderful. Hello, everyone. Ooh, this is our first time doing this special show with you guys here on EWN. It's Tapping with Lisa and G. <laughs> GP just made that name up, but <laughs> yes, we're going to be making sounds. No, no. <laughs> That's right. Cooking lunch. <laughs> yes. Well, this is actually, it feels like we're kind of in someone's living room because, you know, this is a very, we're only here with you guys right now at EWN. We're not on YouTube. We're not in other groups. This is, we, Ruth actually invited us to do something special and we were so excited to oblige and um, see what we could cook up. And we thought, oh, well, you guys like Meridian Tapping. You might know it as also as EFT. And this is something that um, GP has. We have our own group, the looking class. And we thought, well, Let's let's do something here. We show up once a month already for a one a day meditation. I keep saying that wrong. I don't know why. A meditation <laughs> it's a not day. One a day vitamin. It's a meditation a day. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I get those it's, confused all the time. Yeah. It's like a vitamin, right? It is a and, multivitamin, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so how we thought we'd work this is every second Monday here at 3 p.m. Eastern time, we would come on and this is your opportunity to tap. Tap, 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 live with GP, and I'm going to host it, be a student, ask questions, um, but this way you could actually work one-on-one -on -one with GP. This is a great opportunity, and if you aren't able to be here live, but you think, oh, I really do have a question, I would love to know. A lot of people say, I would like to know the script. What do I say? Um, what am I doing when I'm tapping, and and how do I how do I get any assistance? So I've come prepared, GP, and all of our lovely people, um, with some pre-questions and situations. And so we're just going to kind of, we'll model it. And if you feel like jumping in and want to just write to us and say, oh, I've got something, then just we'll start that way and we'll we'll see how this flows. We're going to learn with you what works best. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so GP, first of all, I will ask you for those who are not quite familiar or they've seen this weird tapping on the face thing. And, <laughs> you know, why do we tap? What does it do? And what do, how do you use it where we can help people? Well, it's got a lot of, um, it's got quite a history. I mean, it goes back to the early nineties, right? So it's 30 years old now. And um, the original story of it is actually quite fascinating. Um, it, it was, um, it was kind of discovered by uh, a psychologist by the name of Roger Callahan, Dr. Roger Callahan, a PhD in clinical psychology, a very studious man who got interested in acupuncture. And um, he was treating somebody who had a water phobia. She was scared to death of water. And uh, I guess he had his office in the house and in his own house and the like. Um, so, one uh, in, in one session, he decided to try something with her. Now, of course, um, any kind of phobia is extremely debilitating. She can't go anywhere near water. I mean, she can't go swimming with her, her kids or the, the ocean or, I mean, she was just terrified of uh, anything, any bodies of water. Um, well, Roger said, okay, where are you feeling this? Where are you feeling? She said, I feel it mostly in my stomach. And he learned enough that knew that the stomach meridian tapping was the top of the cheekbone right here. That this is the meridian point of the acupuncture system for the stomach. So he said, oh, "Can I try something for, on you?" She said, "Sure." And he and he just tapped on her cheek on her top of the cheekbone for a minute. And and he stopped and he says, um, "Well, how do you feel?" She says, "It's gone." She said, "He said what? The, the nervousness in your stomach?" She says, "No, my fear of water." And she got up, walked out of his backyard where there was a swimming pool, and he was running after her. Wait, stop that. She says, no, I'm not going to jump in. I don't know how to swim. But she went and she started playing. It was gone. And he said, wow, I'm on to something. And, he, and so he developed this whole very elaborate pattern with algorithms. And if it was this system, then the symptom, then you tapped on these points in this order for this amount of time. And then another guy comes along. Uh, to learn, who wanted to learn this, a fellow named Gary Craig, who was an engineer. He wasn't a psychologist. And he said, you know, Roger, if we just tap on them all, <laughs> we cover all the bases and you don't have to go through this elaborate, elaborate thing. Well, TFT is still around. He called it thought field therapy. And then Gary developed, simplified the whole thing down to where anybody could use it and called it EFT or emotional freedom technique. 
And that's where it came from. And since it's been, it's been clinically proven, there have been real honest to God, double blind studies that have been published in official psychological journals that this really does, really does work uh, dealing with symptoms of stress, PTSD, all sorts of different kinds. Anything that has to do with emotional distress, it functions out. So when I learned it, it was about 15 years ago, I think, uh, or, or so now, um, I found it to be, be effective. And the more I dove into it, the, the more I recognized something that I had learned earlier, that I had discovered earlier, and I, and I saw that this was an absolute perfect tool to help in it. What I had, what I had put together was called inner reconciliation. And I recognized that all of our problems are because the nervous system doesn't feel safe, period. End of story. If it's not safe, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> and we're so unaware of that. We're so out of touch with our bodies that we're not aware of that. That's going to happen. So instead we call it, you know, I, I don't want to get out of my comfort zone. I'm resistant. I'm self-sabotaged. And it really has nothing to do with you. It's just the state the nervous system is in. And in order for any healing to take place, you have to get into it, the nervous system into a place where it feels safe. What I discovered is when I, did this with people, it communicated safety through touch. It's that, for me, it's that simple. I'm not interested in the clinical studies. I'm not interested in all, the, all of that kind of stuff. Wonderful if people are, but for me, it's just like without, it bypasses the, the mind, which is always looking for the reasons why it can say it's safe, right? Mm -hmm. And even if it comes up with reasons, it doesn't matter because the nervous system has already decided it's not. <laughs> right so there's this complete disconnect there but doing this says to the nervous system you're safe and bypasses the mind mm, I like there's that. no judgment of it there's no there's no there's nothing that stands in the stands in the way the body just is getting this information that says i'm safe oh i'm safe and that's why i embraced it because i i saw that unless that unless it is seen that that's Unless the nervous system itself sees that it's safe, not, no change is actually going to take place. So everything I say when I'm doing EFT uh, or I don't say <laughs> is all around creating that space where the, your whole energy system comes to the conclusion that it actually is safe. I like how you distinguish and helped us to know that it's the nervous system that we really are communicating that safety. And my nervous system went a little haywire there because I just got a message that we might not be on Facebook, but on YouTube. So I was trying to, I didn't mean to seem distracted, but we, we are what? somewhere. I just wanted we're to. Not on, we're not on YouTube. I'm not broadcasting today. Just to pause. Um, we had somebody write in uh, to share that Facebook says go to YouTube, but nothing is on. So what? Just I don't know, so I'm just gonna have a peek. I was trying to go to um, trying to get advanced. <laughs> I bought that for a, a long-winded, <laughs> useless introduction. <laughs> no, I bet it was wonderful. I bet you it's somewhere. It probably is somewhere. So let's just have a little check because this is what usually happens. I don't know that I'm actually live, and then I find it. I'm like, yep, I was live the whole time. <laughs> so because <laughs> we are definitely, it says live. So I just want to check. Yeah, and I'm looking. If you look up in the top right-hand corner, you'll see where we're live too. You see, it says EWM. Yes, it doesn't say yeah, YouTube. So we we yeah. must be here. Okay. And and this is good. This is the first time we're doing this, so it's good to check. I see the post. I see that. I don't know. Do you want to have a quick peek on your end? Which... Sure. Let me take <laughs> it's good. Oh, this is our, we'll call this our test run. Yeah, because I'm not... Hmm. I can also hmm. go... I'm going to click off screen. See my chicken post. I hope you guys laughed at that. <laughs> um, I did. I'm just refreshing the page. All right, let's go here. Hey. And it says, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think, I don't know. You are now interacting. Oh, this is for me. Oh, okay. Susanna was helping us out here. I'm going to ask if she sees us anywhere yet. EWN Enlightened Living? No, that's not us. Um, EWN One with the Earth. Oh, where's this group? see us anywhere now? Where is the group? 
There's that group. <laughs> Enlightened Living. Yes. Okay. Live now. It says tapping with Lisa and G for the Enlightened World Network. Live now. Oh, is it live? Oh, maybe I'm looking at the wrong one then. I'm looking at in live living. Oh. Tapping with the Enlightened World Network. Enlightened Living is a different thing. Yes. So I need to go to a different one, first of all, and send Susanna somewhere else. <laughs> and then E W N. And we are. This entire discussion has been broadcast live. <laughs> this is good, though. Then they see how much we care. <laughs> yes. <laughs> No, it's definitely here. It's definitely okay. Let me just say, I'm, it's a different, it's a different EW, and I'm not even. Fuck. You know, we'll we'll help her out later. She's okay. Um, okay. Yeah, it's on the Enlightened World Network, which is not the same as Enlightened Living. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know what? We're we are recording somewhere. I know this, so yes. I'm going to come back to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is good. You know what? This is to be something that. Say you somebody is performing or delivering something or a word that they wrote something in their dog ate their homework or whatever it is. <laughs> that, that is something <laughs> that would come up. And it would sometimes something like this could actually even prevent somebody from doing something again. Like, no, I don't want to deal with technology. Um, I'm afraid to do it. And it would hold us back. This is a live situation that we might want to. Would we tap in the moment of ah, uh, or would we want to sit with it after something has happened and then work through it. Well, if you think of it, do it in the moment. It's always best to do things now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's always best to do it now, but if you didn't, well then whenever it comes up, whenever you think about it, then, then, then yes, absolutely. You, um, you know, just, well, what, what was I feeling at that point? How can I, because we want to become more confident. We want to become more, uh, um, What's the right word? Imperturbable, right? <laughs> so when this stuff goes, you know, when the stuff goes haywire, it's like, yeah, okay, it went haywire. Yeah. So <laughs> next, right. right? It becomes a non-event. Whereas for some people, it can be terrified of being embarrassed or rejected or thought little of. You could see all the overhead that's on top of it that has nothing to do with the actual event, and. This is one of the beautiful things that EFT does, that tapping does, is we have these associations between things, right? That are, that, but they're not hardwired, right? The, an event that takes place in the, uh, you know, that happens to you and your reaction to it are not absolutely linked. That link is a soft link. You were programmed to react in a particular way. You could have very easily have been programmed to react in a very different way. While they have any two can have the same event happen to two people and the reactions will be completely different, right? And it's because there's nothing inherent in any event that says you must react like this. Right? And so when we recognize that it's a soft link, it's software, right? right? <laughs> it's not hardware, right? The hardware just takes in the event that something happened. And then all the meaning, all the emotional content, all the cascade of thoughts is all after the fact. So if you can get right down to that, to the point of the triggering and break that link, you have freedom. And if you don't do that, there's no freedom of choice. This is the only place choice exists. Otherwise, you're just choosing between two programmed responses, right? And, and maybe you will choose a better one but it's, it's not really a conscious choice. Mm -hmm. Not until this is, when this is broken, it's, to, it's total freedom. You can do whatever you choose. Yes, and I have proof actually to offer everybody because I know that everybody has experienced this. They've, re they've had something happen. They have reacted, responded, whichever we want to go with. And then they said, oh, if I could go back, I would do it differently. Mm -hmm. And, and it might be even like somebody butt in front of you in a grocery line and you you let them in or you didn't let them in. But then you went, I wouldn't have let them in. They were rude or I should have let them in. I wasn't really in a rush. It literally it's not even about two different people and how they respond, respond differently, but ourselves in the next second. Right? In the next second. Yes. And then second, yet, I should have reacted differently. The truth is you couldn't have because that's the nature of conditioning. Unless you go back and break that. You can say, I should have, and you could say that all day long, but it won't matter. It happens again. You're going to react the same way. 
because it's a, it's a, it's a link set in the nervous system, right? And that link needs to be broken. And how do you break it? You make it safe to break it. You have to make it safe to break it. Otherwise, the, the nervous system will not just let something go and say, hey, it's cool. It'll never do that. It always wants to prepare for things. And the, and the more unsafe it feels, the more it's going to do that. Mm -hmm. And the more safe it feels, the less solid this is. This becomes very malleable, very easy to, to, to change behaviors when you feel safe. I mean, that's just, I mean, it's really common sense, right? You know, I'm, I'm not in my creative best when I'm terrified. <laughs> yes, and I hope that really lands well with you and, and that opens your eyes and heart to something because a lot of times we think, why can't I just change and why can't I, why can't I just not let this bother me or why can't I get over it? So yeah. we do invite That's you. Why. Yes, exactly. So if you are just tuning in, we are inviting your comments and questions of whether you'd like to have GP help tap you tap you through it, you know, help you tap through it. Um, but I have come prepared and speaking of that. So here's um, something that can control a lot of people in their lives. And the question came up, it, the general big topic, of course, is anxiety. But this is a very specific one. And that's what we do invite you to bring any very specific thing or general so that we can help get there to allow you to feel safe. So we've got a busy mom at home. And she's doing a million things. She's part-time working, part-time schooling, got kids, got a thing. And it, she feels really crappy about not being able to have the tidiest, cleanest house. But it's, <laughs> but it's, it's mind controlling her. It's like stressing her out to the point where when she tries to sleep, she's now like, oh, there's so much more. She get up and sleep. And then I feel guilty because I didn't, but I need some sleep. And it's literally creating this entire um, yeah, just a very stressful, unsafe feeling. She's feeling guilty, um, a failure, and unsuccessful. So how would we how would we tap through something like that? Is is that yeah. enough info first of all, so that when people write in, they could give us a little. Well, some uh, it's luxurious actually. Oftentimes, I can get less than that to start <laughs> with. <laughs> I love sometimes it. people just don't even know, right? right? They just I feel shitty. Yeah. <laughs> that's about all I've got to work with. Okay. <laughs> we could back it up. You're right. Yes. We can go wherever you would start with that. So you're actually talking about somebody. So as I'm talking, before we do anything formal, we just, just tap through the points. If you don't know where they are, just tap where I'm tapping or where Lisa's tapping, which would be the same place, <laughs> although different that. faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so... As I'm talking right now, and you're tapping, there will already be more of an openness to what I'm saying than there would be if you were just receiving it intellectually with the mind. Because I'm not talking to your mind, I'm talking to your body. I'm talking directly to the distressed energy. And that's simply my intention as the one who's facilitating this. It's no use to talk to your mind. <laughs> so you're, you're all stressed out because there's a million things going on and the house doesn't look the way you'd like it to look maybe there's some fear of being embarrassed of people coming over and seeing it right? and it's like can I have it all can't I have uh, you know I wanted to have kids but I also want to have a, a neat house is that even possible? I don't know. I keep my place pretty neat, right? Well, my, my two granddaughters and my son were here yesterday, or Saturday. Right? I was just my older granddaughter the whole day, and then the, and my, the little ones, like, you know, 15 months old, came over. And by the time they left, there was, you know, crunchy stuff on the rug. <laughs> there was Uno cards all over the floor. The place was a disaster. <laughs> I said, just go home. You, you, you have enough to do, poor guy. <laughs> it's like, okay, is it possible? Is it possible? What if it isn't? What if it actually isn't possible? Would you trade your kids in for a neat house? 
I won't have her answer that. No, I'm joking. <laughs> It's an option. <laughs> it's an option. <laughs> People will judge you, but it's an option. <laughs> so is it even possible? If it is possible, I'd really like that. But if it isn't possible, is it possible that I could feel good about me anyway? Could feel okay with the fact that I can't actually do the impossible. I also can't fly. <laughs> I can't speak Chinese. <laughs> I can't bench press 400 pounds. Do I feel bad about that? No. Because <laughs> it's not possible. I sure wish I had a clean house. I, I just enjoy it. I feel more comfortable. My mind feels clearer. What if it was possible that I could actually have a clear mind and feel comfortable even if the house was a mess? Would that be okay? And maybe it is possible to, maybe there is a way to have a clean house. But maybe first, I'll break this association that somehow I'm less than, my mind is cluttered, my, I, I don't have a lot of self-respect just because I can't keep the house clean. What if that's just an association I've made? Just kind of grabbed on by self-judgment. I'm choosing to be open to the possibility that I can have a totally messed up house and love myself anyway. If that's possible. I want that. All right, stop and take a deep breath. We're kind of being surrogates here for the person because <laughs> because they're not they're not here. But just notice that what happens is first off, I never assert anything, I never enforce anything, I ask questions. Would it be possible? And notice, I was, I was just very gently trying to make it safe to break the association because the problem isn't the fact that the house is messy. The problem is you feel bad about it. Mm -hmm. And if I can break that, then you could feel good whether the house is messy or not. And you know what? The likelihood that that house could be less messy is increased a whole lot if you're just feeling good about yourself. Maybe the kids would even help. <laughs> How about that? A learning opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> How about that for a concept? <laughs> now, this is the emotional freedom technique. Yes. It's not the fix it technique. We want the emotional freedom. That is our emotions have been disassociated by all of the stuff that makes us feel bad. I never got that before until just now. <laughs> oh my gosh. So emotional freedom is the freedom from the association that's hurting, that's causing suffering. That's causing the suffering. Oh my and gosh. it's the association. It is not the circumstances ever. Okay. No circumstances cause suffering. If it did, the same circumstance would cause everyone suffering. Right. But yes. it doesn't. So it's not in the circumstance. It's in you. And that's the emotional freedom. Wow. I have to share this to, to the lovely lady that wrote in about this too. And what you just shared there, GP. I, I am, have ha had two bangles. And they, they need a lot of stuff. And I create games for them. I have tissue paper pits. And when I mean tissue paper pits, like literally pits with tissue paper all over the place. And <laughs> it never bothered me. It doesn't bother me at all. But when other people come, they're like, 
whoa, what's going on? And they're like, doesn't bother me. <laughs> so you're right. There's they're suffering because they're like, oh my gosh, how can you have all this crap everywhere <laughs> with boxes yes. and cat things? And it, you're right. It's so it's the association that they have or I have, or that if I thought that they that is so valuable to feel that and hear that. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it's the thing we all have to learn because we we've all been trained to seek our our, our, our freedom from suffering in the control over circumstances. Yes. Which oftentimes we can't do, right? Yeah. I mean, she can't control the circumstances completely with, this is what kids are, right? I mean, I mean you, you kid proof a house when you have kids, you don't expect them to treat your nice things nicely. I mean, if you do, you're going to be rudely awakened. <laughs> <laughs> and so you 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 are you are you're teaching when the, when you can and just keeping them out of trouble when you can't. That's the that's the job. And so we have to we then have to say start looking at how I'm feeling about myself, and that has nothing to do with the circumstances. Yes. And rolling into this now, normally we're going to try to keep it to half an hour. However, we do have a 10 minute wiggle room. So I'm going to, I'm going yeah, <laughs> to, I'm going to use you GP while I've got you okay. here. So, <laughs> and it's funny that you said it's about how we feel about ourselves. Cause the next question was, it was interesting because a lot, um, the umbrella theme would be like the one before would be anxiety. So this umbrella theme would be abandonment. However, it's a branch off of abandonment is uh, this person is, is fearing abandonment so much that they need to be seen, witnessed, watched, acknowledged, whether it's good behavior or bad behavior in order for them to feel that they matter. Mm. So it's a, it's a, um, what would, so let me think about this. They, you guys don't need to figure this out, by the way. You just got to share with us what you're, what you're, <laughs> yeah, you and we'll do it. Yeah. But because we're surrogate, surrogate tapping, um, and I'm trying, I can't really answer much of the questions from the people for GP here, but um, where, when, where's the pain and suffering? I guess it's the abandonment thing. I don't know. I'm making that up. But if it's the, I need to be seen so that I matter, no matter if it's good or bad. Right. That's, that would be it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I'm going to do it a different way this time. Okay. And um, and I'm going to have you I'm going to have you say what I say, which is the traditional way you do it in um, in, e in EFT. But um, those of you who are watching, when I start, please don't turn us off because it's a little different. <laughs> oh. But please just follow through to the end, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So let's start tapping. Okay. I don't matter. I don't matter. I don't matter at all. I don't matter at all. To anybody. To anybody. I have no value. I have no value. I have no worth. No worth. And I, I long for attention. I long for attention. To, it makes me feel as like maybe I do have some worth. It makes me feel like as if I do have some worth. Even though I often get it by bad behavior. <laughs> no, I often have bad behavior. <laughs> I'm just trying to get attention. I'm just trying to get attention. So I'm not abandoned. So I'm not abandoned. Because I should be abandoned. Because I should be abandoned. Because I actually don't matter. Because I actually don't matter. So there it is. I don't matter. So there it is. I don't matter. I have no value. I have no value. I have no worth. I have no worth. I have never had any value. I've never had any value. And I never will. And I never will. Okay, there it is. Okay, there it is. All my life, I've been trying to get some value. All my life, I've been trying to get some value. And hide from everybody that I don't have any. And hide from say everyone it again. that I don't have any value. Hide from everyone that I don't have any value. And uh, I, I'll either be belligerent. I'll either be belligerent. Or I'll be very cooperative. Oh, very cooperative. <laughs> and I'm just trying to get some kind of attention. Just trying to get some attention. So I feel like I'm worth something. So I feel like I'm worth something. But the truth is I'm not. The truth is I'm not. Okay. I'm not. Okay, I'm not. If it's the truth, what can I do? 
If it's the truth, what can I do? The truth holds all the cards. The truth holds all the cards. Then I'm not, I have no value then. And I have no value then. Okay, fine. I have no value. Okay, fine. I have no value then. What a relief. <laughs> what a relief. <laughs> I don't have to hide. I don't have to hide. I don't have to pretend. We pretend, yes. You know, this is it. Take it or leave it. This is it. Take it or leave it. I have nothing of value. I have nothing of value. <sighs> it feels good. Feels good. Strangely good. Strangely good. I spent so much time hiding and pretending. I've spent so much time hiding and pretending. <laughs> I don't have to do that anymore. I don't have to do that anymore. I can just be me, me, worthless me. I can just be me, worthless me. Okay, take a deep breath. I'm going to do another round in a second because I don't want to leave it there. But n notice that even while I'm saying the your worst fear, <laughs> simultaneously your body is getting this message. It's safe. It's safe. It's safe. And it has to do something with that, right? Now, remember, the nervous system is a totally adaptive mechanism. It doesn't do anything on its own. It always responds. And it just adapts to whatever the environment is, right? So it's hiding. It's been forever hiding from this truth, that what it believes to be the truth, that you really don't have any value. That's why it's doing what it's doing, because it's trying to keep you from, from, from having to face the... The, the, the truth that would take your life away if you saw it. Because at one point, it hit you, I don't have any value. It became your truth, and it hid it from you because you really believed it to be true. So now I'm voicing what, in fact, your nervous system believes to be true. That's the first thing. I'm not arguing with it anymore. I'm agreeing with it. Now, what happens if you agree with somebody? Do they feel threatened or do they feel safe? Yeah. They immediately begin to feel safe because I'm agreeing with it. Yeah, you're right. I'm absolutely. I'm a. I'm a, I'm a joke. I'm. I'm a waste of air. Right. Now, I oh, I don't have to fight. Conflict begins to go down. Simultaneously, it's getting this message. It's sensing in the in the environment. It's safe. What? It's safe. And it can't help it. Right. It's adaptive, and it doesn't miss anything. So we've created a different environment. And, and suddenly you're tapping to saying the worst things you could about yourself, and it doesn't feel so bad. <laughs> it's a, I know, it's strange. <laughs> it, it's strange, right? So now let's do another round. Okay. And it's kind of more the traditional way that, that, I, that I do it, which we're just kind of, I call that first phase coming clean. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Come, this is it. <laughs> yep, you're right. I'm a total waste of air. And now we're going to just kind of step into presenting some alternatives, right? So start tapping with me again. I deserve to be abandoned. It's true. I deserve to be abandoned. It's true. I really am a mess. I really am a mess. I really am not worth anything. I really am not worth anything. I've never been worth anything. I've never been worth anything. Well, is that completely true? Is that completely true? It feels really true. It feels really true. I, and I've assumed it to be true. And I assumed it to be true. That's why I've been compensating for it my whole life. That's why I've been compensating for it my whole life. But is it really completely true? Is it really completely true? I mean, I have done some things in my life that were worthwhile. I mean, I have done some things in my worth, <laughs> like very worthwhile. <laughs> I, I have had some relationships. I've had some relationships. Some were even kind of good. Some were even kind of good. I've I've had jobs. I've had jobs. I got I went through school. I went through school. So okay. I'm worthless, right? Okay, so I'm worthless, right? Well, is that like totally worthless on everything? Is that I'm totally worthless on everything? I've assumed that that was the case. I've assumed that that's the case. And I've been trying to hide it. And I've been trying to hide it. But I actually haven't been totally worthless. But I actually haven't been totally worthless. 
Maybe it's not completely true. Maybe it's not completely true. <laughs> yeah. Mostly. Mostly. <laughs> but not completely. <laughs> but maybe not completely. Maybe not completely. Mm -hmm. I know I assumed it to be true. I know I assumed it to be true. My whole energy system assumed it to be true. My whole nervous energy system assumed it to be true. And so tried to protect me from it. And so tried to protect me from it. Of course it did. Of course it did. If everyone knew I was worthless, well, I'd just die. Well, if everyone knew I was <laughs> worthless, I would just die. I'd be completely abandoned. I would be completely abandoned. It's best to assume I'm completely worthless. It's best to assume I'm completely worthless. Than to take a chance that maybe I'm not. Than to take a chance that maybe I'm not. And get really hurt. And get really hurt. So maybe it's not completely true. So maybe it's not completely true. Mostly, but not completely. Mostly, but not completely. It was just, we assumed it to be true. We assumed it to be true. Of course, if you assume something. <laughs> of course, if you assume something. You kind of act it out. You kind of act it out. It's like everything in your life seems to make it look like it's true. It's like everything in life makes it seem like it's true. Even when it's not. Even when it's not. So I can't really tell what's true and what isn't. So I can't really tell what's true and isn't. So maybe I'm not worthless. So maybe I'm not worthless. Ooh, that feels scary to, <laughs> scary to <say. laughs> I'm so used to assuming I was. I'm so used to assuming I was. But boy, what if I'm not? But what if I'm not? What if I actually do have some value? What if I actually do have some value? I probably don't. I probably don't. But if I do. But if I do. I, I want that. I want that. <laughs> I just want to know what the truth is. I just want to know what the truth is. Take a deep breath. And just feel into your body what that feels like. Again, I just presented possibilities. This is this the reason why affirmations never work. <laughs> it's because you cannot contradict these deeply held assumptions. But you can create a space safe enough that the nervous system itself will question those assumptions. You know, what's interesting is as we did that, because that wasn't my question, you know, that was for somebody else. Uh, my nervous system was screaming, I do have value. What are you talking about? <laughs> like it was, it was, it was kind of funny. <laughs> but uh, it, it knows, it knows. And it knows. So, it, yeah. it, it, it knows. Yes. But this message gets in there anyway. Yes. It, different messages got to me for me. Yes. That I, yes. Different yeah. stuff come up. Yes. It's, it, it's quite amazing the way it works. What we're, we're dealing with is the primordial intelligence, the intelligence of life itself, right? yeah. which is far, far more intelligent than this thing up here. Right. Yes. <laughs> this is really just kind of the, the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. If, if you learn the language of the body, which is feeling, not words mm -hmm. the communication begins to uh, it's feeling and touch right <laughs> that it re it responds to which by the way these points you can touch you can just rub them as well you don't have to tap on them yeah which really works good if you're in a meeting or something <laughs> 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 you know and you're, you're feeling a little bit nervous to just kind of rather do this you know or like this this is a really sensitive spot right under the collarbone. Yeah. yeah. Right. One quick, one more quick round, which is just what I normally when I do it, if I'm working with somebody in groups, I compress it all together, but I'll, I'll, I'll spread it out here so people can see what it is. The last night I, I call anchoring. So just tap along with me. Yeah, I'm worthless. Yeah, I'm worthless. Oh, I, should, I should be abandoned. <laughs> Well, maybe that's not as true as I thought it was. Maybe I don't need that. 
Maybe I'm not really that way. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so used to thinking like of myself like that. Who would I be if I was really valuable? If I wouldn't be abandoned? Who would I be? I have no idea. I can feel how my nervous system wants to hold on to what's familiar. So I'm just going to invite my nervous system to open up a touch. Just take a look around. If you find that it's true and I really am worthless, well, shut me down. <laughs> You've been doing that quite successfully for years. So there's no real danger of just checking it out. Just looking. Maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised. Maybe this is more of an assumption than a truth. Either way, I completely accept what's true. <laughs> you can't argue with the truth. But boy, if I am worthwhile, I'd sure like to know it. It'd sure be a different life. But either way, thank you. Thank you for taking such good care of me. Thank you for keeping me safe all these years. Thank you for hiding this from me because it would have hurt so badly. Thank you. I love you. Take a deep breath. Yeah, the anchoring's nice. <laughs> it's not forceful. It's not you stay here. It's just a gentle, have a seat. Have a seat. <laughs> Look around. Yes. Is it safe? Is it as bad as we thought it was? It's a very, it's a, just a very gentle way, a non-intrusive way of finding out, of finding yourself directly. Not through the head, not through what you're told, not through that kind of learning, but the direct experience of yourself as you were before all the programming took place. Yes, so beautiful. It is. Oh, well, thank you, everybody. And I know that um, there'll be people joining on, on the replay. So a final invitation, again, just to write into us here in the comments or privately so we can help you on our next um, EWN tapping session, which will be the second Tuesday of February. And, yes. um, and if not, between now and then, you can also join us on the first Monday of the month for a meditation day where GP will guide us through a, um, a lovely self-inquiry meditation. So thank you so much, GP. This has been helpful for us all, I know. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye, everybody. <laughs>